This is sheet S3.1, S3 I'm sorry. Uh, this is what's referenced from the previous sheet that shows all these details. Um, I just wanted to use this uh, to, to kind of demonstrate and show you how the layers are used, the polylines, the donuts, uh, those sorts of things. Again, just looking at this sheet, you can see the drawings themselves are very simple, uh, but the information in the drawings is very critical. Uh, and again, there's some things missing from this sheet that you, you don't need right now, that then in a week or so, probably uh, Monday week, you'll get uh, the ref rest of it, and we'll look at what's missing and why we need to add it and what it is. But for now, we're just focusing on the concrete and the steel. Um, for instance, we will look at this particular detail right here. Three S three point one. This is a foundation section and a load bearing wall. So we don't see it, but there will be at some point a load bearing wall uh, coming down right on top of this footing. And if you're unfamiliar with the term or don't remember it. A load bearing wall is just the, the wall or a wall in the structure that's actually carrying the weight from anything above it. Could be a second floor, could be a roof, could be anything, but it's actually the one supporting whatever is above the first floor in this case. Um, a non load bearing wall would be a wall that we could just walk in and knock out at any time and nothing would happen. It's not carrying any weight whatsoever from any weight above it. Uh, but this one in particular is for a load-bearing wall, and it will be designed differently than for a non-load-bearing wall. It needs to be a little bigger uh, because it is carrying the weight. Uh, but the main thing you need to be aware of is just the, um, the rebar because this goes back to the layers and separating things out and also the use of the polylines and the donuts. These lines right here are representing, in this case, the concrete face or the concrete edge. Since I'm cutting through this, this is a section I'm cutting through that footing, I now see what was a hidden line on the plan where the footing was from the top view. So looking down, um, looking down from in the plan view, this line here, right here, and this line here were shown as hidden lines. Okay? Now, because I'm cutting through them, they're a face or an edge. So the layer changes, even though it's the same item. Um, and what you have here, this is a polyline. It's a hidden polyline, but it's given a thickness. And the thickness, again, is related to what size dowel, in this case. A dowel is just a name for a piece of rebar that's not continuous. And in this case, the dowel sticks up out of the footing and then goes into the slab. So this dowel is put in while the footing is poured. And then when the slab up here is poured on top of that, this dowel, this rebar right here, is what physically connects the slab to the footing and keeps it locked in place. Okay, But it is a number four, so I want to make sure when I draw this polyline, this hidden polyline, that it has a thickness of four-eighths of an inch or a half inch. Uh, here, these are number six bars right here. It says three number six bars, top and bottom. So I have one two, three bars on the top, and I have one, two, three bars on the bottom, okay? So three bars top, three bars bottom, they're all number six, so they're six eighths of an inch. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And obviously, you can reduce that, but that's how you refer to it, is six eighths. Uh, it is, again, whatever number this is, that's how many eighths of an inch in diameter the bar is, okay? Um, so that'd be three quarters of an inch. And here it says number three ties right here. Let me erase some of this stuff. Get this out of the way. <clears throat> but you can see right here it says number three ties at 16 inches on center. This right here is the tie, this element going all the way. Whoops, I moved my. I didn't want to do that. This is the tie right here, and it is the element that's running all the way around the rebar. Okay, it ties all the rebar, all the, the three on top, three on bottom are physically tied to this with some smaller metal strap, uh, metal ties that like kind of like big twist ties basically. And so these are tied onto here with a 
a metal tie that they just wrap around and twist it with their hands, holds them in place. But these, they only occur, they go all the way around, but they only occur 16 inches on center. So every 16 inches you'll see them. And then that means that every 16 inches, these three bars on the bottom, these three bars on the top, are physically tied to it to hold them into place. They're called ties, but they are rebar. And so the thickness should be 3 eighths of an inch. Um, and that's really all there is to it. And again, just go by the uh, dimensions that are here. We'll add some things to these later on. Uh, and you can see they're all pretty much just variations on the same thing. Just make sure you're reading the notes, uh, put them in the right place. One thing that's not noted on here that you do need to know <coughs> uh, is how far, what is the distance between where this particular rebar for instance is located in the bottom of this footing okay um, from side to side in this case it's going to be pretty much centered okay and then this is running on the outside and over the top of these but every once in a while you'll notice you know you've got a, a distance from top to bottom or you've got uh, a distance say from here to the top Right here, you don't know, you know, they don't give you a dimension to tell you what that distance is right there, those sorts of things. Typically, that's given in notes that are included uh, with the, either on the, the plans or on the drawings, which this particular set didn't have, or they're going to be included in the specifications, which I don't have, uh, but I'm going to tell you that's where they're located. It's usually either in general notes on the plan somewhere or in a specification book. These are actually located in a specification book, which I don't have. Um, and all that is just a book that gives you all the details about how all this should be completed, what type of products, uh, what type of uh, finishing they want on everything, colors, quality, all sorts of things are, are demonstrated uh, and given in these specification books. Uh, and I'll try to get one and, and show it to you here before too long. I have to locate one. Um, but this distance right here generally from the bottom of the concrete is three inches that's the general rule of thumb so roughly three inches up or from the side in this case it's centered but generally three inches up or three inches from either side is going to be the minimum so if it's not given assume three inches up here obviously this one is shown a little bit less than three inches because this is six inches total to here so this is a little less uh, this one's probably about two. So all you need to do is get a good estimate. You know, I can I can eyeball it and say, okay, this line, if I bring this across from here to here is six inches. I know that. Halfway would be about right here. So that's a little less than halfway. So that's about two inches from the top. And that's all you really need to do because we don't have the specs on this. Uh, I'm just telling you the rules of thumb. Um, that's just like these here. you don't know a distance dimensionally from here to here and you don't know a distance dimensionally from here whoops, from here to here okay but that's going to be a minimum of three so if you make all these three all the way around that's fine even if it doesn't look exactly like this a minimum of three inches is fine um, that's really all there is to this. Uh, there's not a lot to structural drafting, like I said, in the sense of the complexity of it, other than the amount of lines and notes that you have. Um, so, again, if you have any questions, please let me know. And in just a minute, I will explain to you the project requirements and um, how I want you to submit everything. All right, well, hopefully all that makes sense. If not, again, please let me know. Um, now what I'm going to do is give you the requirements for the project. Obviously, there's two sheets. There's uh, S1.1 and 3.1, I believe. You're going to just basically reproduce each sheet. The PDFs I gave you are actually 24 by 36 in size, so printing them at full scale obviously will not work. Uh, you're welcome to try to print them on smaller sheets. I don't know how well the text is going to show up. That would be a problem regardless of you know what scale I put it on because they would have to be the same size uh, text for it to all fit. Um, so you may have to use a combination of printing them and uh, just referring to the PDFs online or saving them. Uh, but what I want you to do is reproduce both sheets. I want you to 
set them up on 24 by 36 on your layouts. I want you to create your own border and title block. Uh, this is kind of a, I guess, a uh, comprehensive class, so to speak. I'm not going to give you any direction on it. I just want you to create a border and a title block that's appropriate, has the appropriate information in it. Um, going back to uh, fundamentals of drafting, that sort of thing. Um, just a quick rundown. You're always going to need a uh, project name, who you are, what date you did it, who you're doing it for, those sorts of things in a title block. Uh, but be consistent. You know, if you use the title block and border on sheet one, you obviously use the same one on sheet two. Um, draw them, use the correct layers, set them to scale in the viewports, all those fun things. And then uh, instead of printing a hard copy, obviously, I want you to print a PDF file. Uh, after you create that PDF file, uh, then I want you to upload that to the correct uh, assignment inside the module. And I'm going to put a link inside of the, the module for Lecture 3 Project 1. You'll just click on that. I'm going to call it Assignment Upload or something like that. And it'll take you to the, the page where um, on the top right hand side you'll see Submit Assignment. Just click on that and submit them. Um, but if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. The instructions are pretty simple. Not a lot to it. Um, so uh, just let me know if you have any problems whatsoever. And uh, Preferably use a discussion board. I'll probably put a discussion board up also uh, for Project 1 so you can use that. And that way we can all see what's going on and answer any questions that we have. So thank you for your time. And I look forward to seeing you next week. And uh, just remember the due date on this is Friday the 27th at 12 noon. We're going to pretend that I have a meeting now. I have to go to at, say, 1 o'clock right after lunch. And uh, I need these by 12 o'clock uh, next Friday. Um, so that's our scenario, and we will see you later.